thank you for the opportunity to speak to you about our project uh, wherein we're attempting to use the NXP MRFX1K80 transistor. By way of a little history, in the 1950s a distant early warning system was established in the far north of Canada. In order to use the information from the radar stations that were way up there, it was necessary to bring the information back somehow. This was well before the times when satellites were available. The uh, way that the communications was brought all the way from the far north of Canada towards the United States was through um, a mechanism which is called troposcatter. It's tropospheric scattering. Essentially, the RF signals from one place to another were forwarded through a series of repeater stations that were established as remote bases along the coast of Labrador and also on the coast of British Columbia and Western Canada. These distant early warning sites used tremendously large antennas and very high power in order to get uh, very high availability through the troposcatter mechanism, propagation mechanism. Now that uh, particular type of modulate, or that particular type of RF signaling has um, fallen into disuse. Essentially the bases were uh, abandoned in the late 1960s and the 1970s as satellite systems became available to carry the information from the far north from these still present radar installations. However, recently there has become, there, there has been more interest in these older uh, propagational methods um, because we need, in a particular application, we need to have a reliable over the horizon uh, communications, RF communication system. If you'll follow me to the board, I'll show you what the project entails. Although it widely applicable to other things, our particular project has to do with naval exercises. A naval ship is a large device, a large thing, and you can't really get very close to the mission field location without the people over here knowing that that ship is present. What the Navy wants to do is they want to provide a fast and stealthy smaller boat that can actually launch to the main ship and can do operations up to 100 nautical miles away from the main ship. 100 nautical, nautical miles away means that it's out of range of normal line of sight communications at VHF. Our project is to provide them a troposcatter mechanism for maintaining communications, in this case is data communications, with the away team that goes um, to the mission location. The troposcatter mechanism works by essentially having a high power signal, which is scattered by the um, boundary between the troposphere, which is this, the space in which we live, goes up to about seven kilometers above the Earth, and the stratosphere, which is above it. The troposphere scatters the radiation um, at the boundary and essentially allows over um, the horizon communications. The uh, path that it takes is a high loss path. So consequently, we have to use gain antennas at both ends, and we also have to use high power at both ends. Our plan is to use as high a power on an RF device as we can manage, and the transistor that uh, is uh, being offered by your company actually works perfectly for that application. So this over-the-horizon tropospheric propagational mode is actually a very valuable thing for certain operations. In this particular case, for example, the Navy were considering using satellite phones. The problem with satellite phones is multifold. One of the things is it's very easy for the bad guys to actually um, uh, corrupt the signal, to actually block the uh, signals. And in the, also, in addition, the um, places where these communications are most important is typically an area where there's a lot of activity. And that activity would make use of the satellite phone communications. So consequently, in a situation where it's mission critical to have communications, you can't really depend on a phone circuit which may or may not be available because it's busy. This brings us to our project. Essentially what we're doing is we're doing a software-defined exciter, and we're also doing a software-defined receiver, but we won't talk about the receiver in this uh, video. So the software-defined exciter has to drive a power amplifier. Now, the ideal power amplifier would have high efficiency and high power. High efficiency because it's operating in essentially a small boat environment where there is not a lot of power available, and more importantly, we don't want to generate a lot of heat. 
So consequently, we're looking at uh, class E, potentially, uh, switch mode amplifier, and running it uh, through using a technique which is called envelope elimination and restoration, which was uh, it's widely used in um, broadcasting, for example. And um, it's a, it's a well-known technique. However, it's not really been applied in the way that we're expecting to be able to do it here. The, uh, in order for the trumpet scatter propagation to be useful, the radio, the exciter, has to be frequency agile. We're looking at frequencies maybe as low as 20 megahertz, probably more like 25 megahertz, and as high as 50 megahertz. So in that particular band, which is basically an octave, we have uh, to have frequency agility in that band. So we can essentially choose the best frequency where we get the best tropic scatter effect. So we have uh, a communications path uh, at the lowest possible loss. And as well, we are using that same mechanism as an avoidance mechanism for blocking the signal. Tropic scatter is actually a, a very, um, it's a very useful way of providing these communications. It's a data communication that we're looking at, looking at something over 10,000 bits per second, ideally a bit higher than that, but that is our target currently. And at 10,000 bits per second, we can send uh, still images. We can also send, of course, uh, text, textual data, and we can also send voice uh, using a, um, a high, um, or a high uh, compression vocoder. And the one that we are planning on using is actually the AMBE plus two vocoder, which has a very high compression and natural sounding voice. The, um, the exciter will actually be a, um, an on-off exciter. So essentially we will transmit and then turn the transmitter off and then we will, we will receive. Um, and we do that in order to have a uh, quasi, if you like, uh, full duplex communications path. The reason why we want to do that as well, instead of just turning the transmitter on when somebody wants to transmit something, is we want to be in constant communications with the away team to make sure that there is a communications path when it's necessary. Tropic scatter depends on essentially high power at both ends and high gain. Uh, we're providing the high gain by using uh, digital signal processing techniques and antenna lobe steering. Um, the high power we're hoping to uh, provide using your transistor. The, um, if we can go to the diagram, I'll show you what the uh, exciter looks like. So this is a block diagram of the exciter. As I mentioned to you before, the self-defined receiver, which is part of this project, we're not going to talk about it right now. However, the exciter is pretty interesting. Essentially, it's an IP-connected exciter, so we can bring things back, for instance, for an archival recorder, and we can serve up data to the away team. We also have a voice console position here, again, using the AMB plus two vocoder I talked about, and a data terminal, so we can have data communications with the people who are, who are away from the vessel. If you look here, you can see that we're using an ARM9 processor, which is a digital signal processor, and as well, we're using an FPGA uh, in order to provide uh, the, um, the, the uh, high frequency. We're using a CIC algorithm right here to actually interpolate the signals up to the frequency of interest. And inside the processor here, we're using um, a mechanism whereby we're taking it into the frequency domain. And a lot of the channel modeling that we're doing and uh, frequency and phase filtering and so on, we're doing actually in the frequency domain. Then we're taking it back into the time domain. And then we're doing what essentially is a rectangular to polar coordinates change here. We're taking the I and Q channels into a magnitude and phase angle. The magnitude goes through to uh, the, the uh, FPGA through the DAC, and the DAC through another channel model right here, which uses the least mean squared algorithm for optimization. It'll take a sample out of the, uh, basically out of the output of the amplifier, and it uses that sample plus a pre-distortion mechanism, which is also run by the ARM processor, to essentially um, control a switch mode voltage regulator here which controls the amplitude of the signal here. On the other side, the phase comes up, goes to a, uh, a, a digital uh, controlled oscillator, a DDS, which gives us a quadrature signal of cosine and sine here. Through this complex multiplier process where the data channel comes up here and we're getting just the phase angle information coming out here at the frequency of interest and it goes through the DAC. So it's actually at between 25 and 50 megahertz impinging here in the amplifier. So, and that's a constant amplitude going into it, and we're controlling the, um, the actual amplitude of the output using that mechanism I described before. We're using a Class E matching network here in order to get the amplifier into a high efficiency Class E network, or Class E um, uh, operation. 
This is actually part of the uh, investigation that we're going to be doing because the Class C imaging networks typically are uh, quite uh, narrow band with uh, devices. We need to make it so that it'll work over a wider, maybe even an octave bandwidth. So essentially that's what the uh, unit will look like. Here's the MRF X1K88 transistor and the amplifier associated with it. So <clears throat> the, um, the use of this product is uh, potentially very high. Uh, a lot of the military applications that we've been talking to our customers about are quite excited about using trauma scattered for this particular um, uh, mode of communications. We believe that this is not a, uh, a product line or not a particular application that your transistor would have been used in previously. We understand, of course, that transistors would have been used for amplification uh, below 400 megahertz. However, we do not believe that there has been any thought given to using high power transistors like you make in atropos scatter type applications. We thank you very much for your time and uh, your consideration, and we look forward to hearing. Thank you.